Uh, moving on to delegations 4.1, public health protocols concerns surrounding the pandemic PHDC 8 2021. Rebecca Hahn, resident of St. Catharines. Uh, I'd like to call on Ms. Hahn for her delegation, and I'd like to remind Ms. Hahn of the 10 minute time limit for delegations. Ms. Hahn. Hello, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the purpose, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so the purpose of this delegation is to address the, address the improper use of PCR tests at the Niagara Health System St. Catherine site. According to studies conducted by extremely qualified doctors and scientists, when PCR tests are not used properly, they are unreliable and will produce 97% false positives. These unreliable case counts are then fraudulently used to justify these unprecedented, unconstitutional and inhumane lockdowns, which are statistically killing more people than the virus itself. Now, before I get started, I would like to point out that I've tried several times to address these concerns with the entire city council, all 12 regional mayors, Dr. Herjee and Dr. Feller, as well as three local media outlets, including Niagara This Week, the Niagara Independent and the St. Catherine Standard, all to no avail. Mayor Sensig, as I mentioned in one of your Facebook posts, ignoring my questions will not silence me, it will only make me grow louder, which is exactly what brings me here today. As I have stated in numerous emails, according to well-documented scientific studies and reports, the PCR test, if not used properly, will result in 97% false positives. Now, before I get into these studies, which will confirm this claim, I will first establish the credentials of just five of the 30 doctors and scientists who participated in the two studies I will be referencing today. So first we have Peter Borger, who holds a Master of Science degree as well as a PhD in Molecular Genetics. We have Dr. Allwright Kemmer, specialist in Virology, Immunology, Human Biology, and Cell Biology. She is also a professor at the University Hospital in Wurzburg, Germany. We have Dr. Makata Ohashi, who is a PhD in microbiology and immunology and is a professor at the Takashima University in Japan. We have Dr. Lydia Angelova, a Master of Science in Biology, PhD in Microbiology, and a former researcher at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, where Dr. Fauci works. And we have Kevin McKernan, who holds a Bachelor of Science degree and was awarded patents related to the PCR and DNA isolation. So as I've clearly demonstrated, these doctors and scientists are extremely credible and therefore should be regarded as such as I go through their findings. The first study I will reference, the Corman Drosten Review Report dated November 27, 2020, consisted of 22 doctors and scientists who conducted a thorough review on recommended protocols for diagnosing COVID-19 by use of PCR tests. What those 22 doctors and scientists concluded was, if someone is tested by PCR, and test positive when a cycle threshold of 35 or higher is used, the probability that said person is actually infected is less than 3%. The probability that said result is a false positive is 97%. Therefore, according to this study, using a threshold of 35 cycles or higher is scientifically unreliable. As I've mentioned in numerous emails to politicians and letters to the editor, the St. Catharines Hospital was set to 45 cycles. I have stated I have proof of this claim, however, I have yet to be asked for it. Now, before I move on, there are a couple of you on this committee who are not privy to the email exchanges between, between myself, Dr. Herji, and City Council. So I'd like to point out that Dr. Herji himself admits that there are, in fact, false positive cases. However, he estimates only 1% to 2%, however, did not provide any scientific studies to support his claim. Furthermore, Ontario's Associate Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Barbara Yaffe, in a press conference with Premier Doug Ford on July 30th, 2020, also admits to this issue. However, she states that almost 50% of the time you'll get false positive. So what we have here is quite the predicament. We have our regional officer of health conflicting with our provincial officer of health. To further complicate this, both of these health officials conflict with the unified conclusion of 22 expert doctors and scientists. So the question becomes, who do we listen to here? Dr. Herji, who says there's only one to 2% false positives, Dr. Yaffrey, who says that there's 50% false positives, or the 22 doctors and scientists who say there's 97% false positives. The answer is simple. You listen to the most experienced and the most educated. I will speak to Dr. Herji's credentials since he is the person this committee takes recommendations from. When you contrast the experience of and education of Dr. Herji with the doctors and scientists who conducted the Corbin Drosten Review Report, Respectfully, there's no comparison. Dr. Herji is an MD or doctor of medicine. 
the doctors and scientists who perform the reference study on P are PhDs or doctors of philosophy. It should be noted that the main difference between an MD and a PhD is an MD applies existing knowledge to their practice, while a PhD is trained how to think critically and advance existing knowledge. Now, since COVID-19 is a brand new strain of the coronavirus with reported variants, it cannot be tackled with existing knowledge alone. Therefore, trusting the guidance of an MD who is only trained to apply existing knowledge would be irresponsible and negligent. Considering the consequences of overinflating numbers, which are the driving force behind lockdowns, we need to incorporate the knowledge of more qualified PhDs. Now, if you're still not convinced that we have a major problem with the way we're using PCR testing, the Journal of Science magazine, which is one of the world's top academic journals, published an article dated September 29, 2020, where another study on the use of PCR tests was referenced. It should be noted that one of the doctors who participated in this study, Bernard Lascala, holds a PhD with a particular focus in isolating cell cultures and viruses and bacteria. What this study pointed to is, when they examined approximately 4,000 samples taken by PCR, when 25 cycles or higher was used, less than 3% of the samples could be cultured in a lab. Scientifically speaking, if a virus cannot be cultured in a lab, it cannot be transmitted from one person to the other. So by running the test at 45 cycles, we are creating an exceptionally large percentage of positive test results that are completely unreliable. These people would never otherwise be considered contagious. The only test results that are reliable are the ones detected COVID-19 at less than 25 cycles. Additionally, during the March 5th regional COVID status update, Mayor Jim Diodati noted the discrepancy between the region's reported numbers and the province's reported numbers. Niagara was over-reporting numbers by sometimes up to 50 cases per day, then citing those false numbers in the media, inciting fear and panic, then quietly adjusting the numbers later. Now, Dr. Herji, he seemed to fluff it off as though it was insignificant. However, these numbers are being justified, used to justify lockdowns, which again are killing more people than the virus itself. Now, we all know lockdowns are having catastrophic effects on society. Suicides and addictions are up. The elderly are being treated like prisoners, confined and isolated in small rooms, not being showered for almost two months, and dying alone because they've lost their will to live. Businesses are closing, marriages are falling apart, suicide attempts among youth are up 400%, surgeries are delayed costing lives, unemployment is through the roof, and our country has incurred a $400 billion deficit. So the question is, was any of this necessary? Were lockdowns justified? According to the science I just presented today, the answer is no. So what's gonna happen when the public realizes there was no justification for any of this? What's gonna happen when the masses realize their elected politicians knew, of, excuse me, knew about this and did nothing? Who is going to be held liable? Who is responsible for making decisions to protect all citizens of Niagara, including those who are suffering from the negative effects of lockdowns? Now, according to the Criminal Code of Canada, Section 219, Subsection 1, criminal negligence is when A, in doing anything, or B, omitting to do anything that is his or her duty to do, shows wanton or reckless disregard for the lives or safety of other persons. So I want you to ask yourselves today, have you done anything or failed to do anything to investigate the claims that I've been making since December 2020 with regard to the improper use of PCR tests, which is perpetuating the call for lockdowns? As displayed at Saturday's peaceful assembly, people want these lockdowns to end as they are destructive and they infringe upon our rights. Mayor Sensek, I know you keep touting they do not represent the majority, but simply saying it does not make it true. People want their kids in school and they want to be able to work and live freely as our Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees. Now, before I close out, I would like to formally state let the public record show my claims to be true unless otherwise refuted with evidence submitted to the clerk for publication that A, there is a 97% probability that false positives will result when a cycle threshold of 35 or higher is used. B, the Niagara Health System, St. Catherine's site, has their cycle threshold set to 45 cycles. And C, the accepted science around PCR testing is a threshold should be set to under 25 cycles. I'm hereby giving you five business days to submit to the clerk for publication a report that indicates the cycle threshold the Niagara Health System St. Catherine site has been set to. The report shall also include 
the dates and times of any changes to the cycle thresholds dating back to January 1st, 2020. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. I do hope you take this information seriously. History will not look kindly on those in a position of power who ignored the pleadings of the people to do their due diligence. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Han. Um, do we have any questions of the presenter? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Han. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, Councillor Senzik. I didn't see his name there right away. Councillor Senzik, go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and through the Chair to the presenter, uh, thank you for presenting today. So you've given us some of your, your research and just looking for some accuracy. So are we, because again, are, do you think this is all a big hoax that this is, I just wanna be clear to the public, do you think that everything that's been done today, the impact on the hospitals, the impact on members of our community in terms of the virus itself and those working in the healthcare system who see it, do you think it's a big hoax? Well, I don't like you putting words into my mouth, first of all. I never said it was a hoax. I'm simply presenting to you what science has said. So that's up to you. It's up to you and, and the committee to make decisions based on the evidence that I'm producing today. So I have been submitting these things to you, submitting this research to you, and nobody has done nothing. Nobody has responded to me. So don't put words into my mouth. I didn't say this, a ho this is a hoax. I'm saying there's no. a massive issue with PCR testing. I just wanted to be clear because sure. we've had good discussions previously where you've indicated that there, you're challenged by a lot of the actual research that is being presented to the federal government, to the provincial government, to the, to the regional government. And I just want to make sure that you actually don't think, because there's a lot of, not a lot, there's a few people out there who think this is all just make-believe and it's a big hoax. I just want well, to make sure that- People are dying. People are dying with COVID-19. So I certainly don't think it's a hoax. I just think there's an issue with the PCR testing that needs to be addressed. And that's, and again, through the chair, that's because- your belief is that it's the it's the rate of positivity that's driving our decisions to close things down or well that's that, according to science no 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 again through the chair what i'm what i'm trying to get my you know we've had these discussions before the the matrix for how the government is is trying to protect the most people possible is looking at also the surge impact on on healthcare impact on hospitals and um, but your concern is right now just the, the the kind of testing that isn't being undertaken because your belief that it drives a lot of the decision making well that's i'm presenting science to you it's not a matter of what i believe i trust the science and so the science is saying there's a massive issue with pcr testing and as i mentioned i have proof that we are testing at 45 cycles okay through the chair I, i'm I'm not debating that part of it. It's just so your belief is that the testing is based on the science is that it's it's you're, we're making decisions just based on testing, not on other variables. Well, the the uh, sorry, what was your question? Just in terms of your your basing the testing, your your theory is that the testing is driving a lot of our decisions in terms of. Um, how the government is is um, closing schools or it's oh. having an impact on health care. Like, I'm just trying to, that seems to be your focus of attention as that's well, driving our decisions. Sure. The issue, I mean, when we hear about the cases going up, that's when essentially they close down businesses and schools. Is that not the case? Like, oh, there's too many cases. We need to shut things down. Is that not the criteria you're using to enforce lockdowns? And I, I appreciate the question because that's that's where I think you're you're trying to go is is looking at what is the matrix that as the public health looks at. And and you're right, that is one of them, but I, I think we, we have to do a better job of communicating to the public that it's not just the percentage of positivity that is driving how um, the government is trying to manage this virus. There's a couple of other variables that play and that's where I think we have to do a better job of explaining that. So I do appreciate you bringing this forward, though. 
No problem. I hope you guys look into it. Thank you very much, Councillor Senzik. Seeing no more speakers on the list, uh, we'll be moving on. And thank you again, Ms. Hahn, for uh, pre presenting today.